BTEC Applied Science Unit 1 Chemistry Ionic Bonding. Okay, we've talked already about what an ion is. It's an atom or molecule which has gained or lost one or more electrons. Now, consider sodium. Sodium wants to lose an electron. Yeah, it's got one electron in its outer shell. It would much rather have a full outer shell, so it wants to lose an electron. Chlorine wants to gain an electron. It's got seven electrons in its outer shell. If it gained an electron, it would have a full outer shell. So basically, if they get together, you get a chemical reaction happens and the sodium will give an electron to the chlorine. Yes, and then the sodium will become a positive ion and the chlorine will become a negative ion. Uh, a positive ion because in the atom, in the sodium atom, you've got the same number of protons and electrons. So if it loses an electron, then it has more protons, so it's positive. In a chlorine atom, you've got the same number of protons and electrons. If it gains an electron, then it's a negative ion. So Na plus Cl minus uh, sodium chloride. And there's sodium chloride. Uh, remember, ionic compounds have got giant structures. You get millions and millions of these positive and negative ions all stick together when it's a solid and you get a regular structure, a, a lattice. They're in rows and columns and layers, a very regular kind of sodium chloride is actually cubic. Okay, lots and lots and lots of ions arranged regularly, giant structures in a lattice. Positive ions are called cations. Okay, if, you, if it becomes a positive ion, positive ion is called a cation. Now, here's a, a sodium atom, and I've drawn the electron in its outer shell as a dot. We'll see what happens to that in a minute. So remember, metal ions lose electrons. So if it's a metal, it's going to become a positive ion. Metals become positive ions. The charge will depend on what group the element is in, if it's in group 1 or group 2 or group 3. For example, sodium is group 1, so Na+. Plus. Uh, beryllium is in group 2, so that would be Be2+. Plus. Aluminium is in group 3, so that would be Al3+. Plus. So you can figure out the charge if you know what group it's in. Transition metals can have different charges. So uh, iron, for example, is a transition metal. It's in this middle bit of the periodic table. And it can be Fe2 plus or Fe3 plus. Now, a dot and cross diagram. Uh, if the outer shell is full, then we don't draw anything. Uh, if the outer shell isn't full, then you can represent the electrons with either a dot or a cross. So if you look at the dot and cross diagram for the sodium ion, then it's just no dots or crosses because its shell is full now, uh, but with in brackets with a plus to show that it has a positive charge. You draw dot and cross diagrams for the ions of the following metals. So figure out what group they're in and do a dot and cross diagram for each of them. For the ions, rather. Negative ions are called anions. So positive is cations, negative is anions. Uh, Non-metal atoms, like chlorine, they gain electrons, they become negative ions. Uh, you can figure out what charge they gain. It's 8 minus the group number. So, for example, chlorine is in group 7. So, uh, 8 minus 7 is 1. It will become Cl minus. 
These are polyatomic ions and you should learn them. Okay, it's very useful. You need to learn these. The CO3 2 minus, that's carbonate. SO4 2 minus, that's sulfate. NO3 minus, that's nitrate. And OH minus is hydroxide. So you should learn these polyatomic ions, what they're called and their charge as well, their formula and their charge. Uh, here's a dot and cross diagram for a, a fluorine ion, F minus ion. Uh, the cross represents the gained electron. Okay, I mean, strictly speaking, that shell is full now, so I don't need to draw it. But uh, there you go, the cross comes from, that came from something else, like a hydrogen or whatever. But it's in brackets with a negative because it's a negative ion. So, you draw dot and cross diagrams for ions of the following non-metals. Figure out what, uh, find out what group they're in, find out what their charge is, do a dot and cross diagram for them. Strictly speaking, the dot and cross diagrams, when we do compounds, they'll be a lot more important. But you should be able to do them for the, for the atom and the ion on its own. What does the strength of an ionic bond depend on? Well, consider this. Here are four different cases. You'll notice that the ions are different sizes. You'll notice that they have different amounts of charge. Now, which bond will be strongest? Can you figure out which bond will be strongest? And the answer is this one here. This will be strongest for two reasons. Firstly, because there's more charge, you've got uh, two plus and two minus. So the attraction, the electrostatic attraction will be bigger. Secondly, because the ions are smaller and that means that the, the average distance between the charges is smaller. And so the force will be stronger. OK, the force gets weaker as you move further away. So if the ions are closer together, then the force is stronger. Which pair will be weakest? Which bond will be weakest? And the answer is this one here. Why? Because it's only single charges. There's only one plus and one minus. And the ions are big. So the, the average distance between the charges is bigger. So the, the force, the electrostatic attraction, uh, the positives and negatives attracting each other, that force will be weaker. So that's the strongest, that's the weakest. Remember, if the ions are smaller, then the opposite charges are closer, so the attraction is stronger. Yes, if the, if the ions have more charge, then the force attracting them is stronger, so the bond will be stronger. You could get this table in an exam, this table shows the charges on different ions and it shows the ionic radius, the size of the ions. So you'll be able to figure out using this table whether the bond will be strong or weak. Here are some questions for you to do. Draw dot and cross diagrams for the first 10 elements and their ions. What does the strength of an ionic bond depend on? and explain why for each of the two factors, explain why.